Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're having a lovely day. So today I would like to do my first video on what I find to be some of the stupid laws and stupid interpretations of them in Texas. On this channel, I have gone deep into what makes New York City a very screwed up place to do business, and I have gone over in great, great detail all of these stupid laws, stupid interpretations for those laws, and above all, how the city representatives don't even know their own laws. And it's about time to be a little bit fair and point out what's going on in my new home state. I have been on this kick on this channel recently where I've been talking about forced arbitration. Forced arbitration is when companies try to trick you into giving up your right as a citizen of the United States to be able to take them to court if they have wronged you. They want to take that right away because they do not want to take accountability or responsibility for when they've done something wrong. And if there's anything that drives me nuts in this world, whether personally, in business, or in relationships, or in relationships. It's when people do not want to take accountability or responsibility for when they've done something wrong. And this is a great example of that that I'm going to be giving you in this particular video. I am going to be talking about somebody that is very important in this video because if you have not noticed from the older videos I've done in this channel, even though I had more hair back then because I had not gotten many liens and warrants and audits on my business that were completely unwarranted, I had very, very bad hairstyling. Like, I didn't even have a barber. It was just absolute garbage. Now, I have better hairstyling, even though I have less hair, because I know the best barber on earth. She works at Diesel Barbershop in Lakeway, and her name is Lacey, and she does a damn good job. I will never go to a barber besides her. And she has had an unfortunate experience in the state of Texas getting a gallbladder removal done, which is otherwise pronounced like this. I am not even remotely close to being able to pronounce this, so I'll just say gallbladder removal due to a health issue. So she had her gallbladder bladder removed by Dr. John Ucker, who I will do my best throughout this video to not mispronounce his name the way that I believe it should be pronounced for what he did. She went to John Ucker on June 8th, 2022. This is Mr. John Ucker over here. Again, there's just the Ucker. One way to put it. June 8th, 2022, she went to John Ucker at Dell Seton Medical Center at UT Austin for a Cholecystectomy. I'm, I'm going to learn how to pronounce that someday. Right after surgery, she had a lot of pain, nausea, and vomiting. For nine days after the surgery, the nausea, vomiting, and pain continued. On June 14th, she finally went to an emergency department where an ultrasound discovered several cc's of fluid in her abdomen. She stayed in the hospital for four days. On June 22nd, 2022, a CT scan showed a cut bile duct. She had to have numerous more surgeries and prolonged hospitalization. After experiencing lots of pain, lots of issues, lots of heartache that she would have not experienced if she went to a doctor that was not a mother ucker, she decided that she was going to take legal action to try to hold them accountable and responsible for destroying her insides, which I think is a very fair thing to do. So she decided to go and sue. This is a document where I have redacted some of her personal information, which is why some of the formatting looks funny. I just decided to de delete things you don't need to see, like her home address or phone number. Uh, my client's claim arose from the negligent misuse of tangible property and equipment by an employee of UT Health Austin, acting within the scope of employment. Specifically, Dr. Ucker negligently misused tangible property and equipment, including but not limited to scissors and other surgical instruments, to cut the common bile duct and slash or common paddock duct, the operation called transcending the cystic duct. This, as a result, forced Miss Levy to undergo several subsequent surgeries and prolonged hospitalization. And if you take a look at the health outcome, again, I am going to summarize this because this is literally 42 pages going over all of the fucked up shit that happened to her as a result of going to a doctor that was, uh, again, in my opinion, a real mother rocker. When you take a look at this, the, the, the summary of what went on here. During the surgery, the surgeon mistakenly injured Lacey's bile duct. This type of surgery is severe and resulted in a bile leak, which is when bile escapes from the bile duct into the surrounding areas. This condition can cause significant pain and serious complications. The injury led to the development of a biloma, a collection of bile outside the bile duct, and ongoing bile leakage. Despite attempts to manage and repair this through endoscopic procedures, the leakage continued, suggesting a significant and ongoing injury that did not respond well to initial treatments. Due to the unsuccessful resolution of the bile leak, Lacey underwent a right hepatic lob lobectomy, which involves the removal of part of the liver. This is a major surgery and indicates the severity of this condition. After these interventions, Lacey developed a bilariary bronchial fistula, a rare condition where a passageway forms. Hey, man, when you guys can say pp d 3 hot three times fast, you can make fun of me for my pronunciation of medical shit. 
a rare condition where a passageway formed between the bilary system and the bronchial tree of the lungs. This led to her coughing up bile, a direct result of the fistula. As a result of these complications, Lacey has required multiple additional medical interventions, including further ERCPs, the placement of stents to manage bile flow, and ongoing medical monitoring. Her health summary indicates ongoing problems related to liver function, indicating chronic liver issues likely exacerbated by the initial surgical error and subsequent complications. Now, this was performed at a place where tort law would cause you to have immunity. However, there are, even in Texas, there are exclusions to this immunity so that she would be able to hold this doctor accountable when everybody can see clear as day that he fucked her up. When you take a look at this, it does say subchapter B, tort liability of governmental units. And we are talking about section 101.021. Governmental liability. A governmental unit in the state is liable for, we go over here, personal injury and death so caused by a condition or use of tangible personal or real property if the governmental unit would, were it a private person, be liable to the claimant according to Texas law. So you would imagine here, Will, you know, again, he's using medical instruments. He cut something. He broke something. It is very clear. Other doctors and other surgeons can point it out and sign to it. This person screwed her up. You should be able to sue. Right? Wrong. Let's take a look at some of the other case law in Texas and some of the determinations that have been made as a result of it. In this instance, the doctor is using his hands only and not employing any tangible personal property like medical tools or instruments. This situation typically falls under medical malpractice related to the doctor's personal actions and decisions during the surgery. Such claims often relate to professional negligence or errors in medical judgment, which generally do not fall under the waiver of immunity for the use of tangible personal property unless there is a specific state law provision treatment the hands or body of a medical professional as tangible personal property. And there are supporting cases. Drawing on Dallas County Mental Health and Mental Retardation versus Bossley, this analysis stresses that the injury must be proximately caused by the use of tangible personal property, implying a direct and substantial link between the property's use and the industry. And her lawyer points out, that mere non-use or failure to use tangible personal property as well as errors in medical judgment or general medical malpractice that do not involve the direct misuse of property are not covered under the waiver of immunity in section 101.021 number two. The best part, claims that involve failure to use and non-use of tangible personal property are not within the waiver provided in section 101.021 as per Miller 51 SW 3D at 587 to 88. In layman's terms, if I show up to work and I make a teeny tiny incision where I'm not supposed to and it takes an extra week to heal but you're completely fine, I can get sued under Texas state law. However, if I show up to work drunk, so drunk that I drop my tools on the floor, I can't even see where they are, so I decide I'm just going to use my hands and I'm going to reach in there and I'm going to grab your gallbladder and whoops, I grab your small intestine, my bad, I grab the wrong organ, you can't sue me because I use my hands rather than equipment. As long as I'm destroying your body using my hands and not a medical instrument, I cannot be held liable. You cannot sue me. You cannot hold a doctor accountable. My medical malpractice insurance rates will not even go up in spite of the fact that I destroyed your body. Simply because the way Texas law is written and interpreted means that if I destroy your body with my hands, I get off scot-free. If I take out the wrong organ or I just destroy everything with my fingernail because I didn't cut them that day and I slice everything instead of a knife, this really just comes back to the old Bill Burr skit. Oh, fuck! Get it up, so daisy, sweetheart. Here we go. Upsy daisy, sweetheart. All I did is destroy your insides. Oh, here you go. And you can imagine this guy just like the South Park Cable Guy episode, just going, and I messed you up with my hands instead of a scalpel, so there's nothing you can do about it. I am not a partisan hack. Whether you're dealing with a red state or a blue state, D or R, whether we're dealing with all this New York City business shit or we're dealing with this, I believe in accountability and responsibility. Whether I'm talking about Texas or New York, whether I'm talking about LG or Roku, we are going to be held accountable and responsible when we screw things up. In Texas right now, if there's an additional scratch on somebody's laptop and I claim it was already there and they say I put it there, they can sue me. But I can destroy your insides and be completely immune.
there's no accountability or responsibility there. And above all, as long as the law is interpreted and written as is, there's no incentive structure to not do this again. This man is still working on people's gallbladders, and he will continue to. And his malpractice insurance premiums will not go up a dime because he has never been held accountable or responsible for what he did. If you're going to hold somebody accountable because they make the teeny tiniest snip that they're not supposed to make with a knife, then you need to hold them accountable and responsible if they destroy somebody's insides with their bare hands. When you look at this, encounter for long-term use of medication, history of resection to liver, gastritis and gastroduodenitis, Post-procedural leakage from bile duct, decreased platelet count, abnormal finding of diagnostic imaging, elevated liver enzymes. This report goes on for literally 42 pages. Call me old-fashioned. I think you should have the right to have your day in court if a doctor destroyed your insides. And I don't think it should matter whether or not they did that with a scalpel or their bare hands. It is a distinction without a difference. And the law shouldn't be written this way. And if it is written this way, I believe it should be amended or changed. If a jury of Lacey's peers decides that this ucker did nothing wrong, that's one thing, but she deserves to have her day in court. Here's what I'm hoping the difference is between New York and Texas. In New York, you can have laws and regulations that are so ridiculous, so confounded, so screwed up that when you ask representatives that work at those enforcement bodies how you obey the law, they literally cannot tell you. Have to get entered into the Leeds Online database, or how does that work? Oh. Whoa. And I'm really hoping that the Texas state legislature have better answers than the people that the regulators in New York State and New York City hire that go, whoa. I want to see the Texas state legislature do better than that. You know, because it's very obvious at this point that the letter of the law is living up to the spirit of the law, the basic spirit of morality, ethics, accountability, responsibility, and fairness. Because that's something you'll hear a lot about in conservative state legislatures. Personal accountability, personal responsibility, taking personal accountability for things in your life. And hey... I believe in that. I take personal accountability and responsibility for everything. You will not hear me cry here that life is not fair and everybody got me down. You'll hear me say, eh, I wasn't the best business person. I wasn't the best at this. I screwed up here. I screwed up here. And I have many videos going over my many screw-ups over the years. I believe in personal accountability and responsibility, which is why I believe that a surgeon that can destroy somebody's life should at the very least be able to be held as accountable as me if I scratch your fucking laptop, which is why I am suggesting that you reach out to your representatives, your senators and your congressmen and your governor and your local representatives and you point out, I don't think that you should be able to get off scot-free because you mess somebody up with your hands instead of a scalpel. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. By the way, you guys should all definitely 110% go to Diesel Barbershop in Lakeway if you ever need your haircut. These people are absolutely amazing, especially Lacey. They do an amazing job. I leave my haircuts feeling happy and refreshed every time I go there. I look in the mirror, and I'm never disappointed, at least at my hair or the hair that's left. The rest of it, well... I'll leave that for another video. <laughs> Every time I go there, 100% of the time, she is always happy, excited, has this like, positive, happy aura about her. And I really, I didn't even realize that she was going through all this pain and aggravation and misery. And I kind of felt bad because when I go to this barbershop, there's something for the last uh, few months, I, were, I would go to the barbershop before an occasion, and that occasion would tend to depress me, and then I would wind up going to the barbershop and not the best of mood. But every time I went here, I kind of feel bad because I wasn't in the best of mood the last few times I went. She always just finds a way to kind of make you smile. And one of the things that kills me in life is when the, you know, the most positive of people tend to have the saddest and most negative of experiences. I think somebody like that kind of deserved better. But do consider going there if you want to get your hair cut. They're good people. That's it for today, and as always, I hope you learned something. You better contact your representatives, because I know I'm contacting mine. Think about it. Think about it. See you in the next one.